So a second method for dimensionality reduction is multidimensional scaling. It focuses on the distance between related items as opposed to their actual positions. So multidimensional scaling is a form of dimensionality re reduction. Um, we previously looked at principal component analysis as a method for dimensionality reduction. We have high dimensional data and we want to display it on a low dimensional display on, on just using maybe two or three axes in order to be able to better visually perceive the data even if the data is high dimensional. And so we've looked at this uh, in terms of uh, visualizing graphs. Graphs encode relationships between data points where the length of the edges are relevant. But if we want to if we want to look at a graph where the length is relevant, we might want to look at ways of plotting the nodes of a graph or data based on uh, the relationship between data points based on distance so that we can try to preserve the distance in, in for example, a low dimensional or two dimensional visualization of high dimensional data. We may want the distance between data points in two dimensions to somehow indicate the distance between the data points in higher dimensions. And so that sets up a um, metric MDS, metric multidimensional scaling, which, where you try to preserve the distance between data points, even though you're displaying them in a lower dimensional space. So here's a nice example. We're not doing dimensionality reduction because we'll go from a two-dimensional space to a two-dimensional space, but it, it uh, illustrates how we would compute a multidimensional scaling to try to preserve the distance between points. So here's distances between cities in the U.S., for example. Um, so we've got Boston, New York City, Washington, D.C., Miami, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, L.A., and Denver. And so the dis distance between, for example, Chicago and New York City would be 803 uh, miles uh, in this example. So the, the lower triangle of this data is showing the distance between the, the city on the left and the, uh, the city in the row and the city in the column. And so there'd be zero distance between the city and itself, and this would be symmetric, so I haven't bothered to fill in the upper triangle of this matrix. So given those distances, dij, between data points i and j, between city i and C, city j, can we recover the positions of those cities? So I'm not, I'm not taking the coordinates of those cities, I'm just taking the distances between those cities, basically taking a graph where I'm, I'm specifying the length of the edges between the nodes, and then I want to find the positions of the nodes that satisfies those edge lengths. So we can do that by minimizing uh, this function. We basically take the um, um, the distance between the two data points um, and then we want to subtract their actual distance and we want to minimize that. So if the distance between two data points equals the desired distance between those two data points then this should be close to zero. And we square things here so that we keep everything positive so that um, negative values aren't messing up our minimization. So we can solve this with any number of nonlinear optimization methods. In the example um, I'm going to describe, I solved it just using uh, the Excel spreadsheet program with a, uh, an optimizer plugin. So here's the results that I got. I minimized that distance um, relationship uh, between the actual distance from my optimized variables and the distance, the desired distance. And um, as you can see, things are obviously in the wrong place. I've got the east coast on the left and the west coast on the east, but that should still preserve distance. And there's a few other differences, but basically I've got, um, you know, this general east to west trend. Seattle is above San Francisco and LA. Denver is here. Chicago is where it's at. So I've preserved the distance of my points, even though I haven't preserved the exact geometry of the points. And so this can be a useful layout method, especially for high dimensional data, when you're trying to preserve the distances between the points without necessarily representing accurately their spatial configuration, their original coordinates. So we've thrown away the original coordinates of these points and just using their distance relationship tried to preserve that in our reprojection, in this case in two dimensions. So there's all sorts of ways you can use MDS, uh, multidimensional scaling. You can visualize um, affinities between data points. Uh, 
areas of collaboration based on co-authorship um, of papers, if you're visualizing papers, or the number of any other attributes two data points might have in common. Anything you can describe as a distance, it doesn't have to be coordinate distance, it could be other similarities. Um, it's used in human-computer interaction for user interface design to basically lay out buttons. Um, if you have a dashboard with a lot of buttons, you can lay, lay out the buttons by organizing them based on how similar the, uh, the buttons are to a given task and then uh, let multidimensional scaling compute the coordinates of where the button should be located so that buttons that are used together are close to each other. And it's also used in marketing uh, to create what are called perceptual maps um, that are based on survey data of what people think of different products, what attributes people assign to different products, and then you can figure out what products are similar to other products and create a map of products that way. So multidimensional scaling is enabled by optimization. You don't have to write your own optimization program. You can use pre-existing optimization packages. You just need something that's going to minimize a function, and so you need some form of nonlinear minimization in an optimization package. I found one that was enabled in Excel in order to do the example I described in the slides.